The Panama Canal is a century-old marvel that revolutionized international trade, but new pictures suggest that its glory days may be fading. Disclose startlingly low water levels as proof of a catastrophic drought that resulted in limits on ships going through and a problem that had an impact on the global economy. A viable detour around the ongoing violence in the Red Sea emphasizes how vulnerable these maritime lifelines are in the face of it. Mexico is putting its money into the interoceanic corridor of the Isthmus of Tantec, which is the country's narrowest point. A staggering $4.5 billion investment is planned with the goal of upgrading ports, modernizing a century-old rail line, and establishing sprawling industrial parks. It is believed that this will be a quicker and more affordable land bridge than its rival in Panama. Let's examine this situation. A rejuvenated corridor would tip the scales in global trade and ultimately strengthen southern Mexico's flagging economy. Taking place at the Panama Canal, this little region of land which divides North and South America is where the Panama Canal is, a century-old engineering marvel that connected the Atlantic and Pacific, saving ships thousands of miles by removing the need to circumnavigate South America. However, if you look closely, you can see a blue snake slithering through the land that makes up the canal. Another important feature is Lake Katun, a massive artificial lake that serves as a crucial reservoir for water entering the canal's intricate lock system. Ships literally climb and descend this slippery staircase to cross the continent, which is an amazing feat but heavily dependent on a consistent supply of water. Once more, notice how low the water level is at the lake. A severe drought is raging through this region, and because of it, there isn't enough water to maintain normal operations. This means that ships have to carry less cargo and are subject to strict crossing limits. The results ripple outward. Assume you are a shipper. The waterway was your quickest route across the Americas, but now you have to deal with delays, increased expenses, and a logistical headache. Some shippers are unable to wait and must take expensive detours or place desperate bids in order to get through the line. Since 3% of world trade depends on Panama, it is easy to see how this disruption will have far-reaching effects. An answer. Although there are temporary solutions, the drought emphasizes the canal's underlying vulnerability. Unpredictability brought about by climate change while engineers juggle the globe directly observes how dependent it is on this deteriorating infrastructure. Where is the solution? Interocean corridor. Here in Mexico, where an ambitious concept has been simmering for millennia, look directly north. What if, at this narrowest place where the seas almost reach you, you constructed a land bridge for cargo instead? This raises the possibility of a contemporary rejuvenated corridor and a challenger to the crisis. Many millennia hit the Panama Canal. Global powers recognize the strategic importance of connecting the oceans. Even the renowned explorer Alexander von Hansold saw the potential for it to revolutionize trade. Even though a fully developed canal proved to be too complicated, there were always those who imagined a land-based route. The Dream of the Spanish Conquistadors Following its independence, Mexico carried out surveys, and one bold suggestion suggested building a train to transport goods throughout the islands. Unfortunately, political unrest and a lack of funding were major obstacles in the 1800s, but that only serves to highlight how persistent this vision was and how it did not die. Fast forward to the present, when Mexico has the resources and the resolve to turn this dream into a reality. The Interocean Corridor project envisions trains carrying containers between two modern ports, Catacoalos on the Atlantic and Selena Cruz on the Pacific, as its focal point. The railroad dates back a century. 
However, the design for these enormous industrial parks is more than just the trains. All along the route, people see this as an opportunity to draw in large amounts of capital, entice industry, and ignite development in Mexico's long-ignored southern regions. It's a vast, multifaceted project that combines transportation with economic miracles. It's a bold plan, but the $4.6 billion price tag makes it clear that this is no pipe dream. Mexico is speculating that there will be a railway and a huge chance to redraw trade lines in the Americas and beyond. But what exactly would this transformation entail? The main goal is to revitalize a transformation. A 132-meter section of Tantec Railway Line Z is almost 85% complete. This is a modern rail line. Is the linchpin acting as a land-based route to facilitate the quick movement of containers between the two coastlines? Dredging expanded docking facilities and investments in cutting-edge cargo handling technology are transforming Salina Cruz on the Pacific and Cape Colosos on the Gulf of Mexico into ports that can accommodate massive contemporary container ships and guarantee lightning-fast offloading and reloading to maximize transit efficiency. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Industrial Park's Enormous Transportation Concentration Mexico plans to build 10 industrial parks in key locations along the route of the corridor. The main focus of the economic regeneration plans for southern Mexico is these parks. To attract investment and boost industry, they will use the local natural gas resources for energy, along with tax breaks and streamlined trade laws. The Corridor project aims to process an estimated 1.4 million containers annually and bolster the Mexican economy if it seamlessly transitions from ship to rail to ship again. The key pillars ensuring goods, people, and information flow through the corridor are ventures to tie the entire enterprise together, infrastructure upgrades to regional roads, three connected airports, Minatitlan IST, TOEC, and Wulco, and communication infrastructure like a fiber optic network. International shipping could save transit periods, which is more advantageous than maritime routes. Mexico has the potential to redraw the shipping map. The quicker route and the potential for cost savings are the main draws for shipping lines to stray from the well-established Panama Canal-based routes, but they also raise concerns among the global shipping community. Whispering that this grand corridor is less of a real menace and more of a pipe fantasy. Let's examine why they have doubts. Compare that to a railroad spanning over 200 miles of rocky territory with those resurgent Mexican ports. Can they keep up? It's not just about how quickly trains travel or how sophisticated the new cranes are. It's about being able to handle the vast amount of cargo that passes through that 50-meter Panama Canal every year. Volume moving via Panama Canal shipping lines operate in an efficient manner. Every second matters, and even small delays result in significant financial losses. This is where the geography comes into play. Challenges of the land bridge issues in Mexico Although traveling by train may appear shorter on a map than sailing around South America, in a magical moment, a ship darts effortlessly across the lake, but freight trains. There are speed restrictions and complex loading and unloading procedures while rumbling over uneven terrain. This implies that there is still a chance that the Panama Canal would be much faster overall. What happens if things go wrong? Droughts have affected the Panama Canal, and we are concerned about more than just the weather. We also worry about international conflicts, labor disputes, and any disruption along these important commerce channels. Creates chaos, which is why a project like the Mexico City Corridor provides a glimpse of hope. Possibly not as the primary route, but as a workable fallback in case all else fails. If this fallback is to be effective, it needs to be more than just Mexico. 
attempting it alone. The US, China and the main shipping lines need to coordinate their investments in the newest ships. When a crisis arises, the corridor would become a dependable, speedier alternative thanks to tech-coordinated preparation and smoothing out any hiccups. If that degree of international collaboration materializes, there may be unanticipated winners. Imagine the ships that were destined for Houston. Instead of clogging the Panama Canal, they could dock in Long Beach, zip the containers across Mexico by rail, and presto, they would have found a speedier way to a US port like Houston. The proof isn't in beautiful slideshows, but rather in whether those containers are speeding across Mexico faster than those ships can churn through the Panama Canal. Is Mexico's interoceanic corridor a game changer or a failed ambition? The corridor faces obstacles. It's about overcoming those doubts.